What's good guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on getting something long overdue finally completed. We are going to get all of my factory gauges working with the 1JZ swap into my S14. So it's been a while, uh, three years now since I've swapped and piece by piece I've gotten some of the gauges to work. So today we're gonna to go over how I got all these gauges to work and then button up the last one, which is gonna be the coolant temp sensor, arguably one of the probably easiest ones. But yeah, so let's get started on today's video. Start with, uh, in my opinion, what was the easiest and cheapest to the most difficult and expensive, which they all kind of go on the same path. So fuel gauge, that you don't have to f with at all with an engine swap. You basically can leave your factory tank if you want to redo lines, you can. I did actually run a powerhouse racing dual fuel pump hanger, so that did require some different wiring and I had to splice into it. You kind of just match up the three wires from the, the sending unit to the three wires in your harness, move everything. I have a factory sending unit on the powerhouse racing adapter. I guess the adapter is expensive, but it's not necessary for swaps. So really your fuel tank, you should be able to leave alone. Hopefully it works already. If it doesn't, I'm sure there's videos out there to troubleshoot that. But like I said, three wires from the sending unit. For fuel. Next, coolant. So, there is a factory temperature sensor. That's a one single wire sensor. I'll get out in just a second. We'll show you what it looks like. I decided we're gonna show you on my spare engine just because it's easier to see. So this is the one JZ water neck, obviously. You got your JZ ECU temperature sensor here. So normally there's a factory plug there, or I guess a temperature sensor depending on what car it came out of. Um, it is a M16 by 1.5 thread pitch here. Your Nissan sender is an M12 by 125. So I got M16 by 15 male to M12 by 125 female adapter. So now you got your Nissan temp sensor here. Oh, don't drop them. Thread that into your Daisy water neck, which I'm gonna do on the car in just a second. Then I did have to run a single wire from the water neck. I conveniently had an extra wire already in my harness. Ran that to my uh, area of the ECU and I'll get in and show you what we did there. This is our passenger kick panel area where the factory ECU sits. And the factory wiring harness would connect to this big white plug here. This is your F3 plug is what it's called. So the right way to do it would be spend like a hundred bucks at wiring specialties, get the mail piece, and then you could pin your wires into the correct mail connector. I was cheap at the time, didn't want to do it. So I just cut the wires at the back side of the car side of the harness and then butt connected the wires that I needed to go to the F3 harness. So basically from that coolant temp sensor in the engine bay, it comes through my firewall down here. I believe it's actually this one here that goes then to the cluster. So I'll put up a pin out of this SF3 plug because you will use it for the TAC as well. So coolant, TAC, and uh, actually Speedo. Yeah, all your gauges are gonna be connected into this F3 plug. The correct pin out is going to vary by model year. So this is a 1995, so I'll put up the one for 95. If you have a 96, 97, 98, you'll have to look that up uh, individually and just you know reference your diagram versus the actual wires and the sequence of them on the back of your plug. So yeah, that's coolant. Next, we will get to Speedo, because Speedo is difficult, but also not as expensive as the TAC was for the route that I went the TAC. Speedo and TAC are both gonna utilize the same device. And that device is actually down here in the kick well as well. It is this Dakota Digital. Excuse my wiring, it's kind of a mess. I wanna redo it, but it's basically a signal converter. So you're able to take a different type of speed signal and tack signal and adapt it and convert it to what the car is looking for. So on this case, I only did the speedo. I actually did this when I did the differential swap. So speedo is a little more involved as far as effort for install. So I'll show you what we had to get put on the car. 
I'm gonna show you up under the car where I had to mount the sensor on the differential. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. That red sensor is a Hall effect sensor and it's picking up on those metal teeth on the axle. Maybe not the best view, I apologize, but on the differential. So I had to mount the sensor on the cover of the differential here, space it off so that it was picking up on the metal teeth of the axles, and that gave a magnetic pickup for speed. Then I ran a shielded three conductor wire from that sensor, well, to a Deutsch connector, and then from there, the Dakota Digital. There's this guy here. I have a 12 volt power and ground here. Power this and then the output. Used output three for the signal going up here to our dash. And then the input, you got speed power to our red, speed negative to the black. And then the input signal is the white wire that I used here on my multi-conductor. And I'll try to find a picture and pin out of the sensor that I used and it correlates. I mean, it's three wires, it's kind of hard to mess that up power ground and signal. So that, once we got it working, I can now show you the settings I had to put. Now I am running a CD09 six speed transmission and I'm running a G35 auto differential with 3.35 gearing. So it's kind of particular, your setup may vary, your settings may vary, unless you have the exact same setup as mine. Um, just different diff ratios, tire setups, um, everything like that can change your speed. So what you do is you actually go driving with the GPS active and you can adjust the values on your Dakota Digital until your Speedo is matching the GPS value. And then you just make sure it matches throughout the range of speed. And if so, you've got it set up correctly. Set up for your Dakota Digital. You're gonna wanna have your car on. Dakota Digital on with your red LED indicator light. Open your Dakota Digital app. I've already paired to my device, so it already knows what to look for. If anything, you'd have to set up your device. Once you can see if you're connected, you can hit setup. So you can set up your Bluetooth, set up your speedo. So what I have, so I had to do high input type, pull up on input high, output low. And then my number in particular was a 3.303 to get my speedo to match up to the actual you know, miles per hour, and it actually will tell you on the app as you're trying to set it up your GPS speed. So you would do this while you're driving, um, and then you can test your output. Yeah, uh, the testing output is nice because if you're unsure if you have bad wiring or a bad signal from a sensor, you can test it at a preset output. So yeah, and now your signal is going up. So then that tells you, is it wiring? Is it a sensor? Because initially I tried to use the factory G35 ABS sensors and it wasn't sending strong enough of a signal to Dakota Digital. So I had to buy the aftermarket Hall effect sensor and wire that in. A little bit of a pain, but just the way, way she goes with some of this stuff. Last but not least, we've got the TAC, the tachometer, your RPMs. So that, I am running a ECU Masters EMU Black standalone. So I am able to run a TAC output from the ECU directly to the back of our F3 plug and send the signal up to the cluster straight from my ECU. So that's of course gonna be the most expensive solution that I have. It's not the only route, it's not the only option, especially since you already have the Dakota Digital. You can actually run a speed signal and you can also run a TAC signal. I don't know how you can see that, but yeah. TAC signal, um, input high voltage normal, and you can set up your TAC output. If you have a 1JZ with a factory igniter, like it is here, TAC signal from your igniter that you can utilize, or it may even be utilized off of T1. Honestly, I'm not too familiar, but I know you can use a signal from your igniter into the Dakota Digital and convert that to the correct signal for the S chassis dash. So once you do that, in theory it would work. I don't honestly know the settings, so I apologize there, but I did my ECU Master standalone, and same thing, you can adjust voltages up and down. All right, and okay, yeah, set up the tack, you're gonna go to outputs and then you've got taco so output needs to be aux 4 and it shows you the wiring as well so you see masters kind of nice they give you all that 
RPM multiplier. So that's what you actually have to change. Same thing, you're gonna go to your actual RPM versus your displayed RPM. So you'd match up whatever your RPM is here to whatever your RPM is there. Adjust your RPM multiplier as necessary. And your RPM attack is set up. get all that right you should have all your OEM gauges working well that's gonna wrap it up on this video we as you saw got all of our factor gauges working on our 1JZ swapped S14 took a couple years but we finally got around to it and some of them weren't really necessary I have other gauges but it's just you know to keep it kind of nice and clean and OEM and keep it just feeling like a, a normal car uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if this video is helpful or if you uh, got any insight for getting your gauges to work in your swapped s chassis and hit the subscribe button to see uh you know just all the stuff going on in the garage more things are always happening so uh yeah don't forget to get outside go play in traffic